This is Chapter One of the Complete Works of George Saville, First Marquis of Halifax. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Greenman. The Complete Works of George Saville, First Marquis of Halifax. Chapter One The Lady's New Year's Gift, or Advice to a Daughter. Part One: Introduction and Religion Dear daughter, I find that even our most pleasing thoughts will be unquiet. They will be in motion, and the mind can have no rest whilst it is possessed by a darling passion. You are at present the chief object of my care, as well as of my kindness which sometimes throweth me into visions of your being happy in the world, that are better suited for my partial wishes than to my reasonable hopes for you. At other times, when my fears prevail, I shrink as if I was struck at the prospect of danger to which a young woman must be exposed. But how much the more lively, so much the more liable you are to be hurt as the finest plants are the soonest nipped by the frost whilst you are playing full of innocence the spiteful world will bite except you are guarded by your caution want of care therefore my dear child is never to be excused since as to this world it hath the same effect as want of virtue such an early sprouting wit requireth so much the more to be sheltered by some rules, like something strewed on tender flowers, to preserve them from being blasted. You must take it well to be pruned by so kind a hand as that of a father. There may be some bitterness in mere obedience. The natural love of liberty may help to make the commands of a parent harder to go down. Some inward resistance there will be where power and not choice maketh us move but when a father layeth aside his authority and persuadeth only by his kindness he will never answer it to good nature if it hath not weight with you a great part of what is said in the following discourse may be above the present growth of your understanding but that becoming every day taller will in a little time reach up to it, so as to make it easy to you. I am willing to begin with you before your mind is quite formed, that being the time in which it is most capable of receiving a color that will last when it is mixed with it. Few things are well learnt, but by early precepts those well infused make them natural, and we are never sure of retaining what is valuable till by a continued habit we have made it a piece of us whether my skill can draw the picture of a fine woman may be a question but it can be none that i have drawn that of a kind father if you will take an exact copy i will so far presume upon my workmanship as to undertake you shall not make an ill figure give me so much credit as to try and I am sure that neither your wishes nor mine shall be disappointed by it. Religion The first thing to be considered is religion. It must be the chief object of your thoughts, since it would be a vain thing to direct your behavior in the world and forget that which you are to have towards him who made it. In a strict sense, it is the only thing necessary. You must take it into your mind, and from thence throw it into your heart, where you are to embrace it so close as never to lose the possession of it. But then it is necessary to distinguish between the reality and the pretense. Religion doth not consist in believing the legend of the nursery where children with their milk are fed with the tales of witches, hobgoblings, prophecies, and miracles. We suck in so greedily these early mistakes 
that our riper understanding hath much ado to cleanse our minds from this kind of trash the stories are so entertaining that we do not only believe them but relate them which makes the discovery of the truth somewhat grievous when it makes us lose such a field of impertinence where we might have diverted ourselves besides the throwing some shame upon us for having ever received them this is making the world a jest and imputing to god almighty that the province he assigneth to the devil is to play at blind man's buff and show tricks with mankind and is so far from being religion that it is not sense and hath right only to be called that kind of devotion of which ignorance is the undoubted mother without competition or dispute these mistakes are therefore to be left off with your hanging sleeves and you ought to be as much out of countenance to be found with them about you as to be seen playing with babies at an age when other things are expected from you the next thing to be observed to you is that religion doth as little consist in loud answers and devout convulsions at church or praying in an extraordinary manner some ladies are so extreme stirring at church that one would swear the worm in their conscience made them so unquiet others will have such a divided face between a devout goggle and an inviting glance that the unnatural mixture maketh even the best looks to be at that time ridiculous these affected appearances are ever suspected like very strong perfumes which are generally thought no very good symptoms in those that make use of them let your earnestness therefore be reserved for your closet where you may have god almighty to yourself in public be still and calm neither undecently careless nor affected in the other extreme it is not true devotion to put on an angry zeal against those who may be of a differing persuasion partiality to ourselves makes us often mistake it for a duty to fall hard upon others in that case and being pushed on by self-conceit we strike without mercy believing that the wounds we give are meritorious and that we are fighting god almighty's quarrel when the truth is we are only setting out ourselves our devotion too often breaketh out into that shape which most agreeth with our particular temper the choleric grow into a hardened severity against all who dissent from them snatch at all the texts of scripture that suit with their complexion and because god's wrath was some time kindled they conclude that anger is a divine virtue and are so far from imagining their ill-natured zeal requireth an apology that they value themselves upon it and triumph in it others whose nature is more credulous than ordinary admit no bounds or measure to it they grow as proud of extending their faith as princes are of enlarging their dominions not considering that our faith like our stomach is capable of being overcharged and that as the last is destroyed by taking in more than it can digest so our reason may be extinguished by oppressing it with the weight of too many strange things especially if we are forbidden to chew what we are commanded to swallow the melancholy and the sullen are apt to place a great part of their religion in dejected or ill-humoured looks putting on an unsociable face and declaiming against the innocent entertainments of life with as much sharpness as they could bestow upon the greatest crimes this generally is only a vizard there is seldom anything real in it no other thing is the better for being sour and it would be hard that religion should be so which is the best of things in the meantime it may be said with truth that this surly kind of devotion hath perhaps done little less hurt in the world by frighting 
than the most scandalous examples have done by infecting it having told you in these few instances to which many more might be added what is not true religion it is time to describe to you what is so the ordinary definitions of it are no more like it than the common signposts are like the princes they would represent the unskilful daubers in all ages have generally laid on such ill colors and drawn such harsh lines that the beauty of it is not easily to be discerned they have put in all the forbidding features that can be thought of and in the first place have made it an irreconcilable enemy to nature when in reality they are not only friends but twins born together at the same time and it is doing violence to them both to go about to have them separated nothing is so kind and so inviting as true and unsophisticated religion instead of imposing unnecessary burdens upon our nature it easeth us of the greater weight of our passions and mistakes instead of subduing us with rigor it redeemeth us from the slavery we are in to ourselves who are the most severe masters whilst we are under the usurpation of our appetites let loose and not restrained religion is a cheerful thing so far from being always at cuffs with good humor that it is inseparably united to it nothing unpleasant belongs to it though the spiritual cooks have done their unskilful part to give an ill relish to it a wise epicure would be religious for the sake of pleasure good sense is the foundation of both and he is a bungler who aimeth at true luxury but where they are joined religion is exalted reason refined and sifted from the grosser parts of it it dwelleth in the upper region of the mind where there are fewest clouds or mists to darken or offend it it is both the foundation and the crown of all virtues it is morality improved and raised to its height by being carried nearer heaven the only place where perfection resideth it cleanseth the understanding and brusheth off the earth that hangeth about our souls it doth not want the hopes and the terrors which are made use of to support it neither ought it to descend to the borrowing any argument out of itself since there we may find everything that should invite us if we were to be hired to religion it is able to outbid the corrupted world with all it can offer to us being so much the richer of the two in everything where reason is admitted to be a judge of the value since this is so it is worth your pains to make religion your choice and not make use of it only as a refuge there are ladies who finding by the too visible decay of their good looks that they can shine no more by that light put on the varnish of an affected devotion to keep up some kind of figure in the world they take sanctuary in the church when they are pursued by growing contempt which will not be stopped but followeth them to the altar such late penitence is only a disguise for the tormenting grief of being no more handsome that is the killing thought which draweth the sighs and tears that appear outwardly to be applied to a better end there are many who have an aguish devotion hot and cold fits long intermissions and violent raptures this unevenness is by all means to be avoided let your method be a steady course of good life that may run like a smooth stream and be a perpetual spring to furnish to the continued exercise of virtue your devotion may be earnest but it must be unconstrained and like other duties you must make it your pleasure too or else it will have very little efficacy by this rule you may best judge of your own heart whilst those duties are joys it is an evidence of their being sincere but when they are a penance it is a sign that your nature maketh some resistance 
and whilst that lasteth you can never be entirely secure of yourself if you are often unquiet and too nearly touched by the cross accidents of life your devotion is not of the right standard there is too much allay in it that which is right and unmixed taketh away the sting of everything that would trouble you it is like a healing balm that extinguisheth the sharpness of the blood so this softeneth and dissolveth the anguish of the mind a devout mind hath the privilege of being free from passions as some climates are from all venomous kind of creatures it will raise you above the little vexations to which others for want of it will be exposed and bring you to a temper not of stupid indifference but of such a wise resignation that you may live in the world so as it may hang about you like a loose garment and not be tied too close to you take heed of running into that common error of applying god's judgments upon particular occasions our weights and measures are not competent to make the distribution either of his mercy or his justice he hath thrown a veil over these things which make it not only an impertinence but a kind of sacrilege for us to give sentence in them without his commission as to your particular faith keep to the religion that has grown up with you both as it is the best in itself and that the reason of staying in it upon that ground is somewhat stronger for your sex than it will perhaps be allowed to be for ours in respect that the voluminous inquiries into the truth by reading are less expected from you the best of books will be direction enough to you not to change and whilst you are fixed and sufficiently confirmed in your own mind you will do best to keep vain doubts and scruples at such a distance that they may give you no disquiet let me recommend to you a method of being rightly informed which can never fail it is in short this get understanding and practice virtue and if you are so blessed as to have those for your share it is not sure that there is a god than it is that by him all necessary truths will be revealed to you end of section one of advice to a daughter religion